good at initiating conversation for sure. Yep. Yep. So Kathy, Thanks. what is what does women's health mean to you? Um, it definitely is um, the focus on the whole person, the, the physical, mental, emotional, um, and it also means um, having a say in my my own care. I think a lot of times things are dictated by others' policy and that sort of thing, um, and I don't necessarily get to make some decisions that I would like to be able to make for all women. I think we're we're moving a long way towards we're we're moving towards being able to do that. I love that. It took me a very long time to learn to advocate for my own health with a doctor. Yeah. So yep. so important. So important. And that's one thing I love about the um, we have two two of our very own at the elements down in Surrey, and that's what I love about nurse navigators and patient navigators is um, there's some there's a an advocate for you for us, uh, and it's not just um, we're glad to have um, our nurses from the cancer center, and you know there's other certainly areas where nurse navigators are super helpful and, and very good to have and appreciate all you two specifically do. Um, and Denise, thanks for all you all do for um, helping women and and men. Um, it is, of course, breast cancer affects men too. Um, so thanks for all you guys do. I know that it's been a crazy, wacky year and a half for you guys. Yeah. Yes, it has. <laughs> it has. <laughs> Unprecedented. <laughs> and as I'm aging, it's nice to see different ages in this group, but um, as I'm aging, um, my health issues have changed. <laughs> and, um, and you do have, I'm seeing more because um, we, she, Denise, Sheena, and I have all been here a long time, but I'm mm -hmm. seeing more that you do have to be your own health advocate. Um, yeah. It's the, the whole practice of medicine is changing. So, yes. Yeah. And we like teaching women to be advocates for themselves. Yes. Yep. Yep. I think it's, um, you know, a, a lot of the, the doctors that I see are, are men still. Um, I do have a couple of women physicians, female physicians. Um, and sometimes it can feel for some women, especially hard to advocate for ourselves when, when it is a male physician. Um, and so definitely important to for people to advocate um, and for women to understand um, that we can yeah. advocate for ourselves and what that means, what that looks like. And the, and the physicians also have um, so many patients. It's not like in the old days where you had your family yeah. doctor, they knew everything about you and your family. Think, you know, people move, people are more mobile now. And so it's a different way of practicing medicine. That's so point, you yeah. have to make the, them aware of what your needs are. That's, yeah, that's very true. Yep, yep, yep. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. It's about 11.35. Um, please note the spark question, what does women's health mean to you? Um, we've had some good discussion about advocating for ourselves and um, caring for the holistic person, um, caring for our whole self. We got a, a small group here today um, and that's okay. Um, because this is where the cool kids are today for lunch. So thanks everybody for, for joining us. Um, we know that there are so many ways that you could spend your lunch time and we are really thankful that you are uh, joining us here today. Um, I'm gonna pull up my agenda so I don't go off topic too much. I will say when I agreed to do, it, to do this, I thought we were gonna get lunch. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, what we should have done in, in hindsight is taking you guys some lunch. <laughs> well, we'll have you guys speak again and we'll, and we'll do that. That's lunch, we'll be fine. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll bring lunch tomorrow. You guys are at ARMC, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to bring lunch. Okay. Okay. You're going to have lunch one day. Okay, okay. It's gonna, one day. It's, it's a deal. It's going to come to you. <laughs> It'll just be there waiting for you. Well, thanks everybody for um, joining. Uh, please do continue the 
the chat as we are listening to our uh, speakers talking about women's health. Um, again, thank you uh, for spending your lunch hour with us. You could do so many things and you've chosen to be here with us and we really appreciate it. Um, do go ahead and mute your microphones. Um, sometimes we have some issues with feedback and sound and that kind of thing. So it really works out best when everybody is muted. So thank you for that. I do want to acknowledge that this event is being recorded. You should have gotten a message when you enter. Um, so beware that anything you say can and will be used against you or to support you. Um, so just a, a note that we are we are being recorded and um, we are able to share the the Working Women's Wednesdays in the future. We didn't used to record them, but we have such good content that we want it to be available for. Um, people who aren't able to join us. I want to acknowledge um, any elected officials and those we have running for office on the call today. I see that Bob is with us. Bob, what you got for us this morning? Uh, good morning, everybody. Early voting is happening right now for the municipal election. Uh, I'm running for Burlington City Council and would appreciate everybody's votes. So early voting is at the county office annex building in Graham. Uh, today and tomorrow and Friday from 8 to 5 and then Saturday from 8 to 3 and then election day at your regular precinct is next Tuesday from 6 30 a.m. to 7 30 p.m. Thank you. Very good. Thanks Bob. Thanks for that reminder. I think recent history has shown us the importance of our elections and our primaries so get out there and vote. And thanks Bob. I don't see any other elected officials, but I'm going to give a 10 second um, window for anybody else that I'm not aware of who might be here to pop in. Well, that was probably more like seven seconds, but I didn't see anybody hopping in, so we'll go ahead and move along. I um, want to acknowledge our uh, sponsors for us, um, sponsors for WRC today. Um, Thank you so much to our sponsors. You make it possible for us to do uh, what we do. Um, first, uh, LabCorp. And it looks like we've got Lisa and Jamie. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Lisa Wester. I'm with LabCorp. Um, I'm the senior marketing executive for the Triad area. I've been with LabCorp about 13 years, and I was um, excited to be invited to join you guys today. I've sat in on a couple of your meetings before, but um, I was excited to get this invite today. And my counterpart, Jamie Turlington, she's also with us and she's our women's health specialist. So I invited Jamie to join us as well. Hi, I'm very, very glad to get the invitation as well. I am the women's health specialist for the area, um, territory um, and this area. So um, I, I'm very happy to hear everything that you have to say. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here. And again, thank you so much for your support and sponsorship of us. Appreciate you being here. All right, moving to our sustaining sponsors, um, Impact Alamance and Glenn Raven. Doesn't look like either of um, those organizations have announcements. Um, our supporting sponsor, Exceed Technology, and I see that Barbara is here, and I called her the right name today, um, <laughs> not Brenda, as I do sometimes. So, Barbara, what you got for us today? Well, Exceed Technology, we are a local phone company. We help businesses save money. Uh, so, if your business has not reviewed their phone bill in a while, it's time because, as you know, those charges just creep up and sometimes you look at your bill and wonder what in the world you're paying for. So if you have that, give us a call. We'd be more than happy to do a free assessment for you and help you out. We love helping nonprofits and businesses save money. That's what we're all about. So exceed technology. Thanks, Barbara. And again, thanks for being our supporting sponsor. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. We'll move on to major sponsors. I'm um, going to stop for a couple of announcements in here. Uh, we've got Elon University, proponent federal credit union. Is there anybody? Any yes, Bonnie's here from True Liant. Uh, okay. I'm glad ahead, be, Bonnie. I've been glad to be joining you. I haven't joined uh, this virtual very much, and I'm glad to be here today. And uh, 
True Alliance always open for any new memberships, business accounts, anything that you uh, have any needs for. And I am looking forward to one day getting back live and having lunch together. Yeah, uh, really, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, thanks, Bonnie. Thanks for being here today. And we too look forward to to having lunch again. We're we're hopeful that it's on the on the near horizon. We got Elements Chamber of Commerce, and I see that we've got Logan here. Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Logan Savitz, and I am brand new to the Alamance Chamber. I am their Director of Leadership Development and Education Partnerships, um, and I'm so excited to be part of the Chamber team and to dive into all of the really wonderful programs we have going on. Um, and I know several of you on this call are uh, investors or members in the Chamber, and I just wanted to remind all of you about our upcoming um, community leaders retreat. Uh, the theme this year is Alamance Renaissance and it's actually being held here in Alamance County. It's gonna be at the Addison Farm on November 16th and 17th. Um, and you may have seen an email from me come through about it. Um, that was the first, it won't be the last. You'll see a few more coming through, but um, we're really working to make the event this year more open, more inclusive. Um, because the intent for the retreat is to sort of gather our community leaders together and think about how to best support and celebrate each other and how to inspire and attract more people to this community. Um, so, you know, it's the organizations, the companies and the people like you who are generating experiences for this county citizens. Um, uh, so we're really hoping that um, some of you will choose to join us for this event. Um, if you have any questions about it or you'd like some more information, you can reach out to me. I don't think I'm even on the Chamber website yet. I am that new, but um, my address is just uh, logan at alamancechamber.com, and I'd be happy to hear from you. Thank you for the chance to introduce myself and, uh, and say hello today. Good. Welcome, Logan. Glad to have you. Um, we've got Always Best, Ke Always Best Care Senior Services and Prime Personnel Resources. Anybody from Prime got an announcement? Right. Moving on to corporate sponsors, Milestone Wealth Management, Twin Lakes Community, Katie Smith Photography, and Gillian Dale Mosier. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our sponsors. You make it possible for us to do what we do, um, and that is serving women in the community um, and empowering them and helping women to, to live their best lives. I want to give a shout out to all of our supporters of uh, WRC. Um, you can become a supporting member. Um, Kate has uh, the link up on the slide. It's um, wrcac.org slash donate. Um, if you feel so led, please do help us to continue to help the women in our community. I want to give a big shout out to to my fellow uh, members of the board of directors. We are a hardworking board, um, and that doesn't keep us from being fun. Um, so thanks to the to the board members for all you do for um, to support the organization and to support the community. Please do join us on uh, November seventeenth. It's a different. We are we're messing up the algorithm because um, we're now on the I think that's the third instead of the fourth. I could have that totally wrong. Um, uh, Wednesday of November, Dr. Maria Murray Ryman, the Executive Director of Women NC, will be here to speak with us. And so it's going to be a good one. So please do mark your calendars for November 17th for our next Working Women's Wednesday. Unfortunately, a virtual event, um, but it will be a good one nonetheless. So please do join us. Um, you all may know that uh, we have a, a pretty significant event coming up, our eight annual Leading the Way. Um, and you can see our Founders Award and Rising Star nominees. We have an amazing panel of nominees this year, as always. Um, Lisa Edwards, Sonia McCook, Jennifer Mock, and Nikki Ratliff for the Founders Award nominees. Um, Shreya Burnett, Susanna Goldman, Jessica Johnson, Kristen Powers, and Sky Sullivan as our Rising Star nominees. Um, that event is just next week, which means A, that it's November, which is kind of wacky, um, and B, that you should uh, go to our website and register. There is a $25 
registration fee. Um, and with that comes a sweet treat um, for folks who are interested. Um, we will have it available for pickup at the WRC Center. I said that twice, the Women's Resource Center. Um, uh, earlier that day from four to six. Please do join us for our eighth annual Leading the Way. Um, please also check on the website for some super awesome auction items. We've got uh, 10 amazing baskets for auction. Um, please go and check it out and see what you want to bring home with you. Uh, again, please join us for our eighth annual Leading the Way event. I'm gonna bump it over to Lisa Delphius our incoming board president. Hey everyone, yes, I do wanna encourage everybody to look at those virtual auctions. If you love things like game night and Vera Bradley and, and champagne and um, margaritas and coffee and spas, there's definitely something for everybody on that virtual auction auction and it's an easy way to support the Women's Resource Center. Um, a couple of things to talk about um, before we get started with our wonderful speakers too is just a reminder that this is our 30th anniversary here at the Women's Resource Center of Alamance County. It's a big anniversary for us and we are having a um, campaign all year to celebrate and this is how we bring the programming to you. Um, not only the programming like today, when we have fabulous speakers come in to talk about uh, important topics and, and learn new things and just find out interesting things um, that we didn't know, uh, but it also goes to support the daily work that our client representatives and our um, staff in the office of the Women's Resource Center um, does daily to support the community and the women in our community um, each day when they um, make contact with clients and help them through uh, whatever situation that they're in that they need support. And that's why we're here. And that's our mission uh, here at the, at the Women's Resource Center. So please, um, if, you, uh, if you can, take a moment to consider donating to the 30th anniversary fund. Um, we are not charging for virtual Women's Wednesday. So instead, maybe put that um, lunch fee to a donation if you, if you so choose. Um, but we are out here today because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I know for me, that is um, always a, a, a period in time that I take pause and I remember um, everyone in my circle that has had to um, get that news that they have to um, um, fight something that's pretty scary. And some of those that have not uh, made it through that. Um, but then I think of all of the positive things that um, we have in our world today to help us as women um, to prepare and, and, and find early detection and be more educated and have more opportunities than even five, 10 years ago uh, to give us a, a, a better outcome if we do get that diagnosis. One of the things that we are very fortunate uh, here in our community is to have um, the breast cancer, the normal breast cancer center at Alamance Regional. Um, the three ladies that we have here today have over 86 years of experience um, in the healthcare and uh, helping ladies just like ourselves, um, whether it just be getting us there to get our mammogram or walking us through that scary diagnosis. Um, Denise Breedlove, um, is the mammography supervisor at Normal Breast Cancer Center. We also have Sheena Lambert and Ann Shaver. They are both breast cancer, breast cancer nurse navigators. Um, we are so fortunate to have this resource in our community for us. And I know each of us are looking forward to, to hearing their expertise. So I'm going to open it up to Denise to get us started. Thank you. 
case you are muted. Okay, maybe it helps if I unmute myself. Uh, hey, I'm Denise, I'm mammography supervisor um, here at Alamance Regional at Norville Breast Care Center. I've been in mammography over 29 years. When I landed in mammography after ending radiology school, kind of my passion of helping women to get diagnosed or get that yearly mammogram. Here at Norville, we do 3D mammograms. You'll also hear them called TOMO mammograms. Uh, it's the latest and greatest mammograms. We've been doing them for about three years now. It helps the radiologist to be able to see more tissue differences in the tissue to help get a diagnosis quicker for women. Um, and it does help. Um, a day in life of mammogram is a, a yearly screening would be your yearly mammogram, yearly mammogram. Um, you come in, you get your mammogram, you leave, um, and you get a letter in the mail within a week's time um, stating hopefully that everything's fine. Um, and then you just come back every year. Uh, we also do what we call diagnostic mammograms. These mammograms are either you are having an issue with something in your breast, a lump, a lymph node issue, nipple discharge, uh, dimpling, um, or your doctor has felt something, or you've had breast cancer in the past and you have a diagnostic mammogram. Those are also done 3D. Uh, we also can perform ultrasounds with those if need be, um, prefer, per the radiologist. And you actually speak to the radiologist while you're here that same day and you get your results, which is an awesome, um, Thing that we do here. This is the first place I've ever worked in 29 years that we actually gave results the same day to patients. And that, to me, that's a great thing. You don't have to leave here and wait for a letter or wait for that phone call from your doctor to know that you're okay uh, after your mammogram. So that's a great thing. Um, we also do biopsies here. We do ultrasound biopsies um, and we do stereotactic biopsies. Um, so those are two great things that we do. We actually do the upright biopsies now for stereotactic, which is a little bit less invasive for the patients, uh, causes a lot less uh, time for the patient to be here. And when those are done, um, when we take those tissues out, they're also sent to a pathologist, and then we get those results back in two or three days. Um, and our navigator for radiology calls you and lets you know the results. And then depending on your results, that's where you go next. Um, and I think what also was stated is that we actually have started doing uh, MRI breast here at Alamance this year, which has been awesome. Um, we used to send them to Greensboro. Um, so that's been a great addition to our normal breast care center here. We do MRI breast. We also are working on right now doing MRI breast biopsies. So that's something else, hopefully by the first of the year, um, I'm trying to push to get those done here. So we don't have to send people out of our county to get those done. We can do them right here, read by our radiologist and take care of our own patients. That's my, that's my um, vice. I like to take care of our own patients. I don't want them going somewhere else. I wanna take care of our own here in LMS County. Um, we are, you know, Monday through Friday, we actually do early morning patients, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. Um, so that helps with ladies that have to go to work by eight o'clock so we can do early morning patients or screening mammograms and get those done. Uh, we do lunchtime patients also so people can come during lunch. You know, it takes 10 minutes to get in, get your mammogram done and get out. Uh, so it's a very quick procedure. It's not a very nice procedure, most people think, but it's a pretty quick procedure to get in and get out. And uh, we do late night um, hours. We didn't this year because of COVID, uh, but in the summer, we usually do late night hours. We'll go up to seven o'clock at night so ladies can get off work and come and get their mammograms done and it doesn't inhibit from work or family or anything like that. Um, and that's it. We also do bone densities here. So for women that need to do bone densities and for men, um, we do bone densities here. Um, we do those Monday through Thursdays. Um, so that's also something we provide here. Um, and we do men, we do, also do diagnostics for men. Uh, we've done few, several biopsies this year, and I think we've had a couple of men that's got diagnosed with breast cancer this year, if I can remember right, if it's been this year. COVID's been kind of COVID brain. Um, so yeah, we have a great group of radiologists. We actually have 18 breast certified radiologists that read the mammograms and do the biopsies, so that's very exciting. Uh, again, I've never worked with breast certified radiologists, and that is their passion. They're like us techs. They are passionate about making sure breast health is very important to women in this county. 
in this community. So it's it's a delight to work with all those. Thank you. Denise, I just I just want to tell you and uh, the uh, rest of how wonderful you guys are and how many compliments we get from our breast cancer patients yeah. about how wonderful they were treated and how what a good experience they had. And that makes it that makes it good for us as you hand them off yeah. to us that they've yeah. already started with a great experience with you guys. That's right. Thank you for that. Yeah. We try. There's always no not job. all the time, but we try. <laughs> good job. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, Sheena. Hey, Ann. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Fine. This is a little different from our normal breast cancer awareness event, isn't it? This is quite a bit different. <laughs> Hopefully, everybody can understand us with our mask on. Yeah. We've had some changes in, in breast cancer treatment, and we've had some changes in how we're doing things in the healthcare system. But we're here, and we're excited to still talk about why it's so important for breast health and breast health awareness. And we want you to know that breast health awareness is important and you still need to come for your mammograms and your screenings. And yes, we still are doing mammograms in the midst of COVID. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanna talk a little bit about breast health and breast health awareness. We know a lot of you have been to our events in the past and we hope you are participating this time because I think we have a few exciting things coming up. So if you don't remember us, I'm Sheena and I'm Ann and we're both nurse navigators and VSEP nurses at the Cone Health Cancer Center at Alamance Regional. And we've been here quite a long time. Um, Sheena and I met back in nursing school the first day in 1991. You're telling how old we are. <laughs> <laughs> There's been quite a change since 1991 also. <laughs> Luckily you cannot see the wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> but that's us, and we've been working together ever since. Yep. And we are passionate about breast cancer awareness, breast cancer screening, and breast cancer treatment, in case you didn't notice. So we're going to give us a brief version and tell you some of the most important points today. And one of those things is knowing your risk factors for developing breast cancer. So as we go along, we want you to uh, join us and, and you guess ahead of time and then we'll show you the answers and we'll try to explain a little bit about um, why these are risk factors. Okay, so we're just going to go over them with you. Yeah, we've got a little slide presentation here. So age, what's age got to do with breast cancer? What's age got to do with anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't. You can't stop age, but it is um, the number two risk factor for developing breast cancer. Number one is just being a female. And that's another thing we can't control, but being a woman is um, one of the highest risk factor for developing breast cancer. We actually don't know what causes breast cancer, but we do know there are certain risk factors, so we can't prevent it, but we do encourage um, screening for early detection. So the older we get, we get lots and lots of more things anyway. Yeah. So as we get older, our risk of developing breast cancer increases. Yep. And do men get breast cancer? You're right. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They do. It's a, a low percentage, but men can get breast cancer. Yeah, only about maybe one out of 100 men get breast cancer. But we have seen some men here in our cancer center that have had breast cancer. And some of them have been supportive of some of our other events that we do throughout the year. One of the other risk factors, and it's really important that we know our family history. That's right, and that's something new that we're doing this year. Um, Sheena, if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So as you're going for your mammogram, as you're going for your doctor's office and for your visits, it's important to know your history about your cancer history. What's your family history look like? And uh, So right now we're doing a little pilot study and you're going to look for this and hopefully in the future when you go get your mammogram, you may be doing this. Um, but what we're doing is we are working to um, send you a little text with a, it's called GIA, and it's a little bot text 
and you'll get a text from the, the uh, Come and Help, and it says, can you fill this out for me? And you'll fill it out telling us about you and your family history of cancer, and it tells us, are you at higher risk for developing breast cancer? That's right. That helps us take care of you the best way we possibly can. And our goal with this um, pilot study is uh, we are trying to develop a high-risk breast clinic so that women can come in, talk to the doctors here, and determine what, if they are at high risk, um, what their follow-up should be because not everybody will have the same follow-up. So our doctors here can guide them and guide their primary physicians to know how to follow these women. Um, because they are at higher risk for developing breast cancer. And this is new. That's an exciting thing for yes. us as we're passionate about helping women through this process. And that's not just starting here. That's starting all over the country, but we feel really positive that we are initiating this here. And uh, we're very excited about that uh, a new, di new development in our breast cancer treatment. Exciting. So that's a risk factor, knowing your family history. And some people who have a significant family history may have a genetic mutation called a BRCA1 or a BRCA2 mutation. That's an inherited gene that does cause you to get a, an increased risk of breast cancer. Yes, and now the tests that they do not only test for the BRCA1 and BRCA2, but test for other genetic cancers at the same time. So it's very helpful. So we do need to know the, the whole family history as far as cancers in your family and other medical um, diseases that you might have in your family. And Anne, that does include the daddy side. It your does. daddy side of the family too. Not just your mom and your mama's sister. That's right. But who's on your daddy side that had yeah, cancer? Because you get your genes from your both of your parents. So if you can find out as much as you can from your um, both sides of your family, that will help you develop your family tree um, for medical purposes. All right, so now there's one thing up there none of us want to talk about and that's obesity. Yes, and unfortunately <laughs> it's the, um, that, that, that we get around here and, um, and the older that we get. And we, had, Sheena and I have both discovered you can't really control that. No, especially yeah. menopausal women, but she getting this big yeah. belly after menopause does increase your risk for developing breast cancer. Um, so eating a high fat diet goes along with that. So controlling your diet is, is important and for almost every disease, chronic disease, but um, it does help prevent, not prevent, but um, decrease your risk factor for breast cancer. Okay. So there are some things on there too, like having your first child after the age of 30, maybe not breastfeeding, smoking, um, drinking too much alcohol, all those things we do sometimes just puts our body at higher risk for developing multiple medical problems, not just breast cancer. Yes, so ethnicity is um, also one. Um, African American women or black women tend to have a higher um, morbidity rate with uh, when they are diagnosed with breast cancer, although Caucasian women are, are more likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer. And one thing that was up there that if you ladies that are getting your mammograms, you may or may not heard of it, breast density. And that's um, related, they give you a score when you have your mammogram about how dense your breast is. And Anne can tell us a little bit more about breast density. Yes, Sheena and I were lucky enough to hear the lady speak that started the law in Connecticut that women needed to be notified of their breast density because it is a risk factor in breast cancer, um, not only because of the imaging, but also because of the tissue that's involved. Um, connective tissue can cause breast density um, and you can't see the images clearly as you could through um, more of a fatty tissue. So um, it does increase your risk, I think. It's, a bit. it's second to having a genetic mutation. That's how high yeah. um, a risk factor it is. Yeah. So, and if about 50% of women with a BRCA mutation develop breast cancer in their lifetime. So yeah. this is on up there. If it's second to that, that's a significant. So by law, in 2014, North yeah. Carolina passed a law that women needed to be notified of their breast density. 
um, when they get their mammogram report. And we also started shortly thereafter um, doing a 3D mammogram in our breast center, in the normal breast care center, which is very important because it helps the radiologist identify um, things like tumors or masses that may not be seen on a 2D mammogram. So there are a lot of things we know, a lot of the risk factors we know. Some things we can change. We can change how we eat, yeah. help reduce our weight, exercise, exercise. don't smoke or drink too much, right. can't change our genetics, our family history, or our breast density. Right, so there are things that we can't change, but um, mostly eating a healthy diet. Um, and smoking actually was just added a few years ago as far as its relationship to breast cancer, but it is now one of the risk factors. So um, if you can quit smoking, that's another um, thing that contributes to a lot of chronic diseases. So that would be the, the most important thing you could do is quit smoking. So one important thing everybody needs to know and everybody asks, when do I start getting a mammogram? So one thing important, we talked about family, family history, right. how important that family history is. So typically, most people say age 40, you start getting a mammogram, but if your mother or your sister had breast cancer at 35, you're gonna to wanna to start 10 years prior to the diagnosis of your closest relative, your sister or your mother. Yes, and we do recommend that you have a baseline mammogram at 35. Mm -hmm. Now you may read in the paper here on the news that um, you don't need to have a mammogram till you're 50. We still, and most of our um, physicians still recommend that you have an annual mammogram at full, starting at 40. Okay. So you may hear some differences and that's based on insurance and statistics, but our recommendation is to have an annual mammogram after 40. Yeah, the American College of Radiology, so your radiology team and the American Society of um, Cancer Doctors, ASCO, also recommend annual screening mammograms for women. So. Ann and I have a little theme we've always said, yep. and that is early, early detection, detection is your best protection. So just remember this, monthly breast self-awareness, um, just look at your breasts in the mirror. If you see anything abnormal or you feel anything abnormal, just give us a call or give your doctor a call. call. And start getting those mammograms, and we do 3D here. And we now have breast MRI here, which is also something new yeah. for um, Norval Breast Care Center. So that's great. And the guys are great there at Norval. So yeah. if guys have questions, pick up the phone, give Ann and myself a call, yeah. or call the Norval Breast Center. Okay? All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Let's now go. we are off duty. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Come back next year. And it'll be great. <laughs>
lay letters that we give patients yet. Some states have done it earlier than others. Any other questions for our guests today? Well, this, this is Bob Bird. I'd like to give a shout out to Ann and uh, Sheena and the staff um, and, and just say what a wonderful place LMS Regional is for cancer treatment. So my wife, Barbara, back in 2013 was diagnosed with breast cancer at the Norval Breast Center. And Ann and Sheena took over as navigators and they really helped us, help my wife to go through the process. I mean, she ended up having chemotherapy and surgery and radiation therapy and uh, a really good experience uh, in spite of the fact of having to suffer through all that, but they made it easy, as easy as possible. And they took good care of me, the family as well. So um, I highly recommend everybody going to uh, ARMC if you have issues with breast cancer or any other kind of cancer for that matter, or most every kind of cancer. As you know, I'm a retiree of, I worked on the management staff at ARMC for 35 years. So uh, I try not to be biased, but be objective. And that's where we go for our health care. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. One other thing that, um, that Sheena and I do, um, we have a clinic for women that don't have insurance. Um, and so if you, if you know of any women that don't have insurance, Medicare or Medicaid, we are able to see these women in, in our breast and cervical cancer control program screening. And um, we do that clinic on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and then they go to the breast center for their mammograms that day. And that helps with a lot of barriers that, that these women have as far as transportation, uh, just the ability to get here and to get their screenings. And our goal is for every woman in Alamance County to have the ability to get their mammograms and get their breast screenings. So um, we're, we're working with Denise and, and the Breast Center. We're always trying to make sure that women in Alamance County have that availability. And we also work with the Charitable Foundation of Alamance Regional and raise money through what we call the Pink Ribbon Fund. And um, because like Ann said, we're passionate about helping the women in Alamance County and make sure they get their screenings because we know, like we said, um, early detection is your best protection. We wanna find something early that because breast cancer in early stages is curable. So the uh, Charitable Foundation raises money. We, a patient is uninsured and does not meet eligibility for our BSEP program. Um, then we can still get a mammogram done through our Pink Ribbon Fund. And um, so that's been a, a huge blessing. And we actually have served over 700 women a year, probably through our BSEP program, that meet those eligibility and get free mammograms. And, and in total, we do about 1,000 um, free mammograms for, yeah. for underserved women in our county. That, that tells me a lot about Alamance Regional. Yeah. and the commitment to community. And it makes me really proud to work to work here. Ladies, I've got a question. So if you've got someone who has never been in to have a mammogram, never been in to have any of these things done, what would that look like for somebody? Just in case, you know, because I know there's a lot of nerves and apprehension about going in and having that done. So what does that process look like for a new patient? Denise, I'll, take that I'll one? take this one. So for a new patient coming in, I know it's very nerve wracking and um, as far as like coming in and having a mammogram done, um, we try to make it as easy as we can. Uh, we try to, you know, make you, make you at ease as much as we can. We know it's stressful. We know it's your first mammogram. Everybody on the streets have told you how bad it hurts and it's going to kill you and all this stuff. And we kind of laugh that off and go, you know, um, but the first thing we do is we we'll get you in the room and we get you undressed. We tell you that process. We'll tell you what's going to happen, you know, what we do, uh, what the positions are going to look like. Um, and then we actually go over 
what's going to happen afterwards because as a baseline if that's what that's called when you have your very first mammogram it's called a baseline mammogram um, you have a very good chance of getting called back for additional imaging for the diagnostic mammogram um, because mammograms need to be compared every year to make sure there's no changes and that's for the radiologist to know that information and that very first mammogram that patient comes in there's no comparison. That radiologist has no idea what's normal for that patient for 35 years or 40 years or even 50 years uh, for her first mammogram. So we try to go over all that process. So it's not as scary when you get that call back saying you've got to come back in. That doesn't always mean it's a cancer. That just means there's a change in that breast that we need to look at closer. So we try to make it, you know, we try to make it as easy. If you're with me, I'm going to try to make it funny. I'm going to be like, sorry, Bob, don't listen to this. I'm going to be like, if we can't do this for four minutes, we should be men. Come on, girls. We can do this. <laughs> so I, I kind of just try to laugh it and say, you know what? Come on. We can get this done. We can save your life. It's a life-saving procedure that we do 20 minutes, every 20 minutes of the day. And this will be good for you. And we'll make sure that you're okay. And if it's not, then we're going to take care of you, whatever that means in the future. Thank you. That, I think, clears it up and kind of gives people an expectation of what that looks like, because I know we hear a lot of people say they're afraid to go because they don't yeah. know what to expect. Exactly. And a lot of people tell you, you know, I call them my mammo drug dealers on the streets. They're, they tell you some bad information out there. They tell you how terrible it is, or if you're big or if you're small, what it feels like. And it's 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 my very first patient this morning that came in. She never had one done before and she left and she's like, that wasn't so bad. I was like, I told you it wasn't going to be so bad. So it's not as bad as everybody's told you it's going to be. And it's it's a life saving procedure that can help you. And it takes four minutes. Wonderful. Guys, we have a question in the chat. Now I'd like to encourage any of our other participants that maybe can't unmute but would like to pose their question into the chat. We'll be glad to moderate those as well. Um, Tammy has a question. She says, how, how often do women with, with ultimately benign findings have to have repeat scans? That's really up to their physician. And I'm assuming that you had a biopsy that was benign or that's what you're talking about. Um, a lot of times they're followed uh, every six months, maybe for two years, um, and then you go back to regular screening as long as everything is okay. But it's really up to the physician. We also have the comment that Alamance Regional Charitable Foundation is amazing. I disagree with it. Um, Back to the question about barriers. Yeah, obviously, probably financial is one of the um, biggest barriers that you see. So it's wonderful to hear that you have uh, ways for community members to come in and get a free mammogram. What would you say are other kinds of barriers for um, getting people through the door? Transportation. Uh, transportation is one, but we do. Um, we do work on that. We had uh, yesterday. We had a patient come in. We worked with Golden Eagle Taxi, um, and that was paid. That'll be paid through the Pink Ribbon Fund. Um, just education um, of the community and and knowing uh, that you do. We do recommend mammograms every year. So um, for the women that haven't ever had a mammogram in the community, they don't always know where where their resources are. We work with the sliding scale clinics, the uh, Piedmont Health Services. Um, we work with all of the local providers um, to let them know about our program. So most of most of the providers in the community know. And one of the benefits, if they don't have insurance and they do come through the uh, BSAP program, is that we can get Medicaid to pay for their cancer treatment. So that is a big benefit of coming through this program. So like Denise knows if she has somebody that comes in and they um, need a biopsy, we need to get them in our program before that's done so that um, we can pay and get Medicaid for that patient. 
And we work real close with the breast center. If they get a call from someone that's uninsured, they usually notify us so we can screen them to see if they're eligible for a free mammogram. So we work closely together. And one other thing about the Pink Ribbon Fund is it's not only for uninsured women, it is also for women going through breast cancer that may have barriers due to their treatment. So they aren't able to work or um, they, they just have how, you know, needs with utilities, um, supplies for after their surgery. Um, lymphedema is an issue with a lot of women. So we work with our occupational therapists to pay for lymphedema sleeves or gloves or whatever they need. So the Pink Ribbon Fund is just for breast cancer patients or for breast cancer screening, but it's not only for women that don't have insurance. Great. That's a great um, opportunity to have that in our community. We are so blessed. Yes. Um, you, I love the video. That was a great, a great way to get a lot of information out um, to, to people. Um, what other ways do you guys, or does the hospital, um, bring awareness to the um, the services that you guys offer? Do you do marketing and fundraising? Um, events. Tell us a little bit about how you get the word out for folks to get their mammogram and to support the Well, typically prior to COVID, <laughs> pre-COVID, uh, we always did a lot, well, a couple of um, breast health awareness events for October and would go out into the community and do an educational event. We've done some marketing events. Yeah. Uh, we've, man, we done tons of churches and all kinds of places we've been to speak about breast health and breast cancer awareness and the importance of getting the mammogram. Um, and this was, we did this little video during COVID because we couldn't do an in, you know, face-to-face -face yeah. event. And it was a YouTube and put it on our, you know, the That's LMS the Regional website. Facebook yeah. site and and got it out that way. So there are, we're trying to be a little bit creative and getting the word out during uh, COVID. <laughs> and we, but, we do try to reach women that we may not reach otherwise, but um, we've had, uh, we've done events at the country club where um, they were having a golf tournament or a, a women's golf tournament or tennis event, or um, we did one um, through um, the Dream, Dream Center. Dream, Dream Center, Center with Lisa. With Lisa. Um, yeah. And we've done several there, actually, trying to reach the Latina women in our community. Um, we've been at Ebenezer. We did our last in-person event at Ebenezer. We've done them at Mebane Arts Center. We, we do big events a lot of, most of the time. And at the Ebenezer event, we were expecting 150 women, and we provided dinner and, and our education, and it ended up 300 women came. So... <laughs> We had to do yeah. like loaves and fishes and, and cut the chicken in half. But, uh, <laughs> but it was good. We had a good time. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Do you have any other questions from our audience? Um, no. Well, I'm going to ask one more question. So what if you are that person that it has um, suspect comes back suspect. You know, Kate asked about what about the new person that walks through in that process? What if you're the person that um, has something that comes up on the mammogram? Tell us about what that process looks like as far as um, for a patient. So if you get from your mammogram, if you get called back, um, we first have to get an order, of course, from your doctor and then we call you to get um, you scheduled. Um, it depends on your schedule, how we can get you done. We usually try to get you in within a week's time, which, you know, most people, some people are good with a week's time. Some people feel like that's just going to inhibit, you know, because most people are scared when they get called back and we get that. Um, but what happens, you get called back. Um, for the most part, you have extra mammography images. There's special imaging that we do mammography wise. Uh, and sometimes we do an ultrasound. We show those to the radiologist uh, and he or she decides if we need to do an ultrasound and we do it while you're here. 
And then after that, either the mammogram or ultrasound or both, you actually speak to the radiologist and he or she goes over the results. It can either be it's completely benign. There's no need to do anything else. Um, or they want to do maybe a six month follow up on you. Um, or it's a biopsy uh, that they don't like the way that looks. And if it's a biopsy, you actually speak to a lady named Sam while you're here. And she goes over the process with you then, like what the next process will be for that. So we try to try to guide the patient from when you get called back or if it's an issue you already have, like if you feel a lump or something like that, when you walk out the door, you know what the next process is. So we try to, and like I said, the radiologist always speaks to the diagnostic patients. Uh, so you always know when you walk out that door what the next step's going to be. And hopefully it's benign and you're good to go. But um now, biopsies, if you come in for a biopsy, that takes a couple days afterwards because that's sent off to pathology where we have to get those results back. And then um, if you are diagnosed with a breast cancer, Greensboro Radiology um, calls us, Sheena or I, that after they talk to the patient and give the patient their diagnosis, um, they notify us and then Sheena and I try to call the patient as soon as we get that notification um, to schedule them to see an oncologist and a surgeon. And then um, we try to get them in within a week. Uh, and every, our, we, our whole breast team has a goal uh, from the time of abnormal finding to the time of, of seeing a doctor within two weeks is our goal. We try to do it even um, quicker than that if we can. So, um, and then we schedule those appointments. Sheena and I got try to go to the first appointment, the first med -oc appointment and take notes, um, go over a care plan with a patient. We provide um, education, a breast cancer treatment handbook that's also paid for through the Pink Ribbon Fund. And um, we support them through their, their treatment until some people need us more, some not so much, but um, it just depends on their treatment plan. Oh, that's wonderful to have that support um, during a difficult time from, from you guys. Um, I do have one other question that's come up in the chat. Um, if you know something about infl inflammatory breast cancer, can you talk a little bit about that? We can. It's, uh, inflammatory breast cancer is uh, a much more rare cancer. Uh, we don't see it quite as often, but it is... Um, we can tell you some of the signs and symptoms to look for. Typically, you're looking like infection, um, redness in the breast, um, warmth to the breast. It can be a swollen breast. It can even look like an orange peeling. And so we educate women about the importance of being what we call it breast cancer awareness. That's one of the things we talk to women about um, to look for, some of the signs and symptoms to look for for breast cancer. Um, it is an aggressive type of breast cancer. It gets into the lymphatic system, into the skin, and the skin that gets swollen is why I kind of get that, um, uh, we call it uh, poto orange mm -hmm. uh, look or the orange peel look. Um, but it is treatable, and we try to get them in fast because it is a, an aggressive type of breast cancer. So if you ever have... Uh... And that's why we say to look in the mirror when you do your breast exam, because you can't always feel something, things like redness, swelling, it, those you may not notice if you don't look at your breast in the mirror, uh, pulling in at the nipple are all things that you wouldn't necessarily notice if you just did the manual exam. So it is, they're actually say that the visual exam of your breast is most important, but um, we think you need to do both. But if you see redness, if you go to the doctor and they treat you for infection and it doesn't get better on antibiotics, um, you probably need to have a skin punch biopsy because that's how they diagnose inflammatory breast cancer. Not There's not usually a mass, so um, they have to do a skin punch biopsy for that. Don't wait, it is very aggressive. Yeah. Wonderful. I don't have any other questions. I do have a, a charge for everybody here on this call. When we, um, Kathy's gonna wrap us up here in a few minutes, but before we do so, I would like to ask each of you um, to talk to three people. 
or more in your circle after this presentation and ask them if they've had their mammogram. And if not, um, refer them to their physician or to the Breast Cancer Center um, and you know, help somebody detect early because that really, as I said, is the best protection. Um, Kathy, I'm gonna let you take over from here. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, for that charge. And thank you, <clears throat> Denise and um, Ann and Sheena. We really appreciate you guys being here to, to talk about this with us and appreciate your candor and frankness and um, are so glad to have you as our um, local nurse navigators and on staff at our local hospital. And thanks to Bob for the shout out to ARNC and um, local, local health care um, is good and our staff and, and physicians and nurses at ARNC are amazing. Um, I'm a former employee there too, and I too try to remain objective and not biased, but it's, it's the best healthcare around. Um, before you all go, um, we have a, uh, Lisa mentioned that it's our 30th anniversary. We have a drawing for a 30th anniversary mug that Kate is holding up right now. Um, and I'm gonna toss the mic over to Echo Bloom, one of our um, Masters in Social Work students who is going to do the drawing for us. Take away, Echo. Hi, thank you, Kathy. Um, I did the drawing and our lucky recipient is Ruth. Ruth, you have won the mug. Ooh. Is she gone? She's, oh, there she is. She's muted, yeah. but she's there. Keister, got a mug for you. We'll get it to you or if you come by the center, you're welcome to pick it up. Okay, thank you, appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I <laughs> um, also want to mention that we do have a, a job opening with the WRC. One of our um, client representatives um, positions will be open. So if you're interested, check our website. Uh, if you know folks who would be interested in bid, check our website. Um, have Refer them our way um, and uh, let us know if you have any questions. We are going to wrap up formally now. Um, if anyone wants to stick around and do any um, networking or um, chatting with other folks, um, please do so. Um, do join us next November 17th, which is in three weeks, I think, um, uh, for the November Working Women's Wednesday with Dr. Maria Murray. Ryman from uh, Women, North, Women NC. Uh, she's the executive director and we'll have a good chat that day. Um, thank you all again for coming. Thank you for being our supporters and for helping us do what we do. Um, and want to remind everybody of Lisa's charge to check with three women in your circle and make sure they have gotten their mammogram and are taking care of their health. Everybody have a great week and a great few weeks and stay on if you wanna do some networking. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.